What's going on Guardians, your boy Sly here, back at it with another Destiny 2 news video for you. And as always, thank you all so much for hanging in there and supporting the channel. Now I haven't been dropping a lot of videos here lately because I'm planning on taking off at least, I mean at minimum two weeks in early September for the D2 launch. And you know, work didn't like this, neither did life. So putting in a ton of time now will smooth things over when time gets here. So yes, bear with me for just a few more weeks guys, but in the meantime, let's get to some of the most recent Destiny 2 news. Alright, so first up, as you might know, Gamescom is starting up here very, very soon. And with it, new Destiny 2 details are bound to drop. Now, we've all had hints at a live-action trailer dropping here very soon, along with some rather enticing posts that I'll talk about in just a few seconds. But before we go into that, the PC beta is due to drop on August 28th, which is a little over a week away. And as with every beta, a beta trailer tends to drop in a few more details. You know, at least for everyone to gawk over. So, the PC beta, of course, no exception. You can check out the full video here on YouTube, and oddly enough, it didn't drop out of Bungie's YouTube channel, but rather from NVIDIA's. Now, Activision and NVIDIA have always had some kind of serious partnership for quite some time now, and this just further cements it, I suppose. Which is another reason why I would keep an eye out for NVIDIA's panel at Gamescom. Something tells me, and I have a funny feeling we'll be seeing something big from them in terms of Destiny 2, but that's speculation on my side, and of course, time will tell. In any case, the trailer, while it isn't very long, it does showcase some interesting items. First, it looks like the PC beta will be shipping with some new weapons, at least weapons that were not in the console beta. At the beginning, we see what appears to be a Hake auto rifle, and that is definitely something that was not in the console beta. Whether or not this is for show, I can't say. I doubt it because shipping other weapons will allow Bungie to gather more data on damage output, handling, etc. The Nightshade and the Nergal Pulse Rifles were like the go-to weapon of the console beta, so perhaps a different weapon will show itself as king of the PC beta. As it goes forward in a smooth 60 frames per second, mind you, it shows off another Hake rifle, this time a Pulse Rifle. That sight, pretty unmistakable. But again, there was no Hake Pulse Rifle within the D2 console beta, and if I remember correctly, only a sidearm represented Hake. So as we continue, we see another new one, and this time it's a dead orbit auto rifle. It shows itself pretty much plain as day, right next to another hockey weapon. So from what it looks like, guys, there will be a whole new array of weapons that the PC community will be testing out before launch, which is, again, not only a way to keep things interesting, but also a smart move on Bungie's side. Perhaps the biggest headliner within this video was the showing of not only new armor, as you can see in this picture, but a sword as well. It has a Rays Lighter-like effect to it, but as you can see, it is clearly not the Rays Lighter, at least as we know it. It's a rather plain-looking straight-edge sword, but since I think swords will become a standard weapon in loadouts, even at lower levels, it makes sense to again test it before launch. Now there has also been talks of it being an exotic weapon, and replacing the ones the console beta received. I don't quite know what to think about that yet, but again, the more testing, the better. Either way, new weapons, new armor, yes please. It will make the PC beta far more invigorating than if it was simply just a copy of the console version, and also better for Bungie as well. So on top of having all of those possible changes, a new map will be introduced as well. It's called Javelin 4. It's an indoor-outdoor map similar to the setting of Thieves' Den within Destiny 1. It will be set on EOS, and from what I can tell, it's a war mine base complete with missile bunkers and everything else. So it's sure to have lore significance as well, which I'm sure we'll hear more about later on. Alright, so next let's talk about the recent article that dropped from the UK-based magazine called Edge. Now, I did a video of this a few days ago, which you can find in the links down below, but they talked about some pretty interesting things. The big one to take away from this was that they walked away impressed from the campaign, like beyond impressed, and even more impressed by the Hunter's third subclass, which they were asked not to spoil. On top of that, they said that the campaign, which by the way has over 55 hours of in-game playtime alone, consists of over 80 missions and activities. They also have again stated that the beta was an old build and not to worry so much about everything that took place within it. Tons of things have changed over, and a few of them will be noticeable within the PC beta. But grenades are much, much more powerful, abilities charge way faster, more power ammo, and energy weapons will have the ability to detonate enemy shields once you break through to the health par. There are quite a lot of spoilers in this article, which I'll end up leaving out, but it continues to tell us that Nightfalls will be a timed event in Destiny 2, and the time will be strike dependent. They talked of a certain strike that had to be completed within 13 minutes, which is pr pretty damn fast. 
Another cool sneak peek of the article talks about exotics no longer being limited to endgame scenarios only. They talked about a warlock chess piece that helps with grenade recharge, and it dropped while your character was still within single digit levels, as in like below level 10. So exotics seem to be a game-wide decision now, not just an endgame weapon. And the final noteworthy subject comes across in the form of boss fights. Luke Smith had this to say about boss fights within Destiny 2. Quote, Boss fights are no longer attritional checks of your damage output and endurance, but tests of skill. The excellent, shape-shifting final boss neither relentlessly shells you nor surrounds you with swarm of minions, but does just enough to ensure you're constantly moving, always thinking, forever under threat. His health bar goes down quickly once you land shots on him, but the real battle is creating the opportunity to do so, finding gaps between his attacks and his backup troops. End quote. So I don't necessarily think that this means DPS checks will be completely absent within Destiny 2. I think it will definitely be more of like, you know, a timing dance with mechanics. Think more of like King's Fall. Most of the encounters and damage came from some kind of buff or mechanic within the game. And you never really shot at orcs at all, in the, you know, at the final boss. Or at least not in terms of, you know, shooting him to do damage. The detonations are what killed him. So I think a smarter boss design, mixed in with more in-depth mechanics, will be the norm from here on out, especially with the new weapon systems being put in place. That's really the only logical place left to turn to. Whether or not it'll be a good thing, well, we'll have to wait and see. So while I still think DPS checks will be present within raids and in-game encounters, they will not be as noticeable as they used to be. Like I said, there's loads more in there, and Reddit has a pretty good breakdown of all the spoilery goodness. So check out the links below if you want to know more about that. And finally, our last little tidbit of news actually is kind of awesome and complete speculation. Once again, in Reddit, there was a post that was deleted and blocked so fast that I didn't even have time to read it by the time the link was sent to me. And it was sent to me by a viewer, which by the way, thank you Mike. In any case, they talked about several videos that are due to drop before the month is out, including an official launch video, a live action video, and two more. But the biggest part about this post is that they talked about lead-in content coming to Destiny 1. According to this post, and this is a big if, Destiny 1 will be getting an update that leads us into D2. It's supposed to drop on September 1st, which is the Friday before D2 releases. Now, it's supposed to have an epilogue and a prologue that set things in motion. Along with these videos, there will be two story missions as well. The epilogue, according to the post, is supposed to be 4 minutes and 9 seconds long. Now, whether or not they posted these timings and all that stuff just to make it look official, I have no idea. But there are some pretty specific time frames posted here. In any event, the two missions will again launch with everything else and supposedly will drop at 10 a.m. Pacific on September 1st. Now, these videos and missions will unlock free for everyone, so don't worry about that. The first mission is supposedly called Imminent Invasion. Race across a soon-to-be-ravaged Cosmodrome after you learn of an incoming threat. And then mission two is called Guardian Down. Revive a fallen guardian and help fight off the Red Legion on a reconnaissance mission outside of the tower. Apparently, there will be small rewards for these missions, a ghost shell and a sparrow, but my question is, why rewards? Since we can't transfer anything to D2, why give them to us at all? Especially this end, you know, this far into D1. Part of me... You know, part of me really wants to believe it because it would be so effing awesome to have like a lead into Destiny 2. And I loved all the pre-DLC events that Bungie used to drop like, you know, the Invading Wolves and the Blades of Crota event back in the day. So this does fit into something like, you know, Bungie would do. It could also tell us while we were flying back to the tower in the opening mission of D2 Homecoming. It's also curious because this post was made and almost instantaneously deleted along with its poster. Now the comments are still left as well as the thread, so you can check that out in the link down below, but everything else is pretty much gone. So I think that would be an absolutely awesome way to start up the Destiny 2 hype. But again, trolls are everywhere and it's hard to tell what's real anymore. However, the last leak we did have concerning D2 back in January turned out to be 99% true, so who knows. I guess September 1st we will know for sure. Also, this is supposed to be a free update for both platforms, so Xbox out there, don't you guys worry. Alright ladies and gents, and the final thing I want to leave you all with are two mysterious things to talk about. First up, the Edge Magazine article talked about something called The Magician. The editor who wrote the article said to ask us about The Magician, but The Magician? Absolutely no clue. Perhaps a new OP weapon? Exotic subclass talent within the Hunter subclass? 
I have no idea, but if it's cool enough to be mentioned on top of everything else they talked about, then it must be pretty special. In any case, that's it for me, guys. As always, thank you all so much for watching and for supporting the channel. Guys, we are just 10 days away from the D2 beta and a little over two weeks until the launch of Destiny 2. Absolutely so stoked for all this to come down. And for those who are curious, I will be streaming the PC beta if you wish to check out the new weapons and how it looks. Also, if you're on PC, feel free to hop on in and we can crush a few strikes, PvP games, whatever. It's also going to be awesome because I'm terrible at mouse and keyboard, so that should be a good enough reason to watch right there. Anyways, I'm out, y'all. Keep being awesome, Guardians, and feel free to check me out on Twitter or Facebook. Sly Nation, Sly Nation Gaming. If you're new to the channel, I'll be covering Destiny 2 throughout this entirety, so keep it here for tons of guides and reviews as we get closer and closer to launch. Take care, guys, and keep those eyes peeled for more D2 content in the weeks to come, but until then, this is your boy Sly, and I'll catch you all next time.